before you open your mouth, before you start yelling at your uncles, right? Before you start teaching, giving them the khutbah, you come in here the khutbah and you say, I'm gonna do this at home. That's a good point. My, my, dad, can, my dad needs to hear this one. This is gonna make a great point of argument, right? A lot of excited young people do that. They discover the religion, they hold on to it, and they use it to debate with family, right? When you do that, you're, you're basically abandoning what the messengers did. You have to have a little credibility first. When you turn to the religion, you become the best son, the best daughter, the best husband, the best wife. Speaking of the best husband, I want to tell you a story. A really good one on this subject, making people conscious of Allah. You don't just invite people to have taqwa of Allah with your words. Your character says a lot. A friend of mine, he became a friend actually on a short trip, told me about how he was raised in a Muslim family, he's Guyanese origin, and in Guyana there's Muslims that are committed, and there's Muslims that have mixed their religion with Hinduism, and some Muslims that are just Muslim by name, and they've completely almost lost everything of the religion, they almost know nothing of the religion. And he was of the latter type, he almost knew nothing about the religion. So as he was growing up in New York, he almost completely just wasn't even practically Muslim. <coughs> he used to you know, get into fights with his mother, he went to jail a couple of times, he was in gangs, all kinds of stuff. Later on in life he decides he wants to, you know, he's looking for God. And he knows by, at least by name he's Muslim. I think his name was Muhammad or something, right? By name he's Muslim, so he should look into what religion first? Islam. So he starts looking into Islam, starts going to the masjid, starts learning how to pray again, becomes more serious. At the time he was, you know, he had married his girlfriend who was Christian or whatever. Right? And he starts becoming more serious about the religion. And then his wife notices that he's praying. And the beer is gone from the fridge. And he's not going out with his drinking buddies. And he doesn't go to Atlantic City on the weekends. He's a different guy. Something's changed, you know. And he doesn't say anything to her. He, just on his own, he didn't yell at her, didn't tell her to, you know, put a hijab on or whatever, lose all her friends. He didn't do any of that. He went to a scholar, and I thank the, I make dua for the scholar that he went to. He didn't tell me his name, but he said, I went to my scholar, and I told him, look, I'm becoming more and more aware of Islam, but my wife, of course, is a Christian. And she's not even a practicing Christian, she's just kind of what I was before. She's exactly like I was before. How do I help her? He said, don't tell her a thing about Islam, just be the best husband you can be. And to do that, just study what kind of a husband the Prophet was. Just do that. Don't worry about what you need to tell her. Worry about being the best possible husband, and that is the sunnah of the Messenger. The Messenger would buy his wife gifts. The Messenger would joke with his wife. The messenger would spend time with the mother of the believers. The messenger would praise and compliment the mother of the believers. I'm mentioning that on purpose, guys. <laughs> he would compliment them. You guys eat the first, first morsel of food in iftar, or like, mm. <laughs> And the wife says, what? You go, nothing. <laughs> right? You drink the, the, some of the desis here drink the first little sip of lassi. I know the economy is bad, but uh, are we really that short on sugar? Or, you know, <laughs> very diff very painful for you to say a compliment. I understand, especially for those of you that come from my from my original country, Pakistan. For you to give a compliment to your wife can cause an ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand, but <laughs> it's a sunnah, guys. Good food. That's amazing. You know, and yours, we're so, our wives, our, the, the sisters are so used to hearing nasty things from us, that when we say nice things, they get freaked out. <laughs> like if the husband just says, you look really nice today, she goes, what do you want? <laughs> so, uh, like, uh, and, like, she gets worried, like he's up to, you know, we gotta fix that. I mean, that's a problem. <laughs> it, can, it can't be healthy. So he starts doing these things with his wife. And in the beginning, he used to argue with her sometimes about Islam and tell her how Christianity doesn't make sense, how can three be one and one be three, all those kinds of arguments, you've heard them before, right? And none of those would work with his wife, none of them. He's like, no, no, I'm a Christian and that's it, Jesus is in my heart, leave me alone. Three years go by, he stops talking to her about Christianity and how dumb it is or whatever, stops debating with her, he's just being what he can be as the best husband, and one day he's making maghrib and his wife joins him in salat. And he's in Salat, it messes up his Salat, like, you know, like, <laughs> right? What's, just, what's happening here? Right? Yeah. Can we go for a break after my podcast? 
Yeah, yeah. We can give a break in five minutes, sure. For 10 minutes, because we have to use it. Sure, sure. So, he gives, you know, he, after Salat, he looks at her and he goes, what happened? And she goes, what? Nothing. And he goes, no, you have to tell me what happened. <laughs> and of course she says what pretty much any wife would say, it's complicated. <laughs> All right? But eventually she tells him, and she tells him, look, I've never seen a husband like you. My dad wasn't like that. I've never seen a father like you. The way you are with our child, I've never seen a father be like that. It's so beautiful. It, this religion can't be wrong. It can't be wrong. This is ittaqullah. You see how aware you are of Allah in your life. Right? It's not how many ayat you've memorized, how many hadith you know, how much knowledge you can spit out at someone, how many quotes from scholars you can deliver. It's not about that. Now how are you living your life? People can see that. You're calling people to the taqwa of Allah. Haqqa tuqatihi. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And that's the next part. In five minutes I have to give you a break because some people have to get, you know, get their cars and park them like they would at work. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha